Welcome back, my friends. This is video lesson 18. Um, so I was going to move on to slope fields today, which is how you graph a particular solution. I'm going to talk to you about vocab and everything else today, um, what exactly a particular solution is. But, um, you know, I've gotten a lot of text messages from probably half of you that you're confused. This is hard. I tried the homework. I don't really get it. Um, it seems like the confusion, the confusing text started with video lesson 16. I went over the homework problems in lesson 17 and told you guys like, okay, well check out lesson 17. I go over all the homework problems, see if that helps. And some of you texted back. Hold on a second. <laughs> Excuse me. Some of you texted back that it helped a little, but you're still really confused with this stuff. It's hard. So I'm not going to move on to slope fields um, because obviously if you were in class, you guys know how Sakara rolls. If you were telling me day three or whatever that I don't get this, I really don't get this, I would spend another day. So I'm going to spend another day. So we're going to do video lesson 18. We're going to do more differential equations. That's what this is called. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the vocab so that it gears us up for slope fields in the next lesson. And then I need you guys to communicate with me because really, um, you can't sit in class and communicate with me. I was expressing my frustration to some of you and my frustration to my husband that I can't imagine how hard this is for you guys on your end because calculus is hard. It's one of the hardest subjects to learn, um, and teach for that matter. Um, but you know, we're not in a classroom together. So I know a lot of you feel, it seems like you feel bad almost when you text me, you're like, I'm sorry, the videos really help. Um, and I know you're trying really hard, but I'm just so lost. I don't want you to say, I'm sorry. I don't want you to feel guilty. You have to communicate with me. If we were in a classroom together, you guys would tell me, you'd raise your hand and ask a question. And the, and the fact of the matter remains, I told my husband, like if I was teaching this in class and I got to a point where you guys were all like, wait a second, how did you get why? Um, I would stop and make sure you all understood it. But we're not in class together. You can't raise your hand and ask me that question. So you just have a video and I, I just keep going and you still have that question. So you're still lost and it's not helping. And I get it. So please, I welcome the communication. You need to communicate with me. We have a few more weeks of this. Um, to be exact, today is Friday at the Sakaro Crib, May 15th. We have four more weeks of this. So I need you to communicate with me. You must, you must, you must send me a text message and say, help, I don't get it. And don't feel bad um, because that's the only way I'm going to know. It's the only way we can communicate with each other. Um, I wish I could do live classes. I've went back and forth with the district about it. Um, I don't know if any other teachers are doing anything. Basically, it was put out to us that we're not allowed to do Zoom at all. Not allowed to use Zoom um, because basically people can hack into it. And when people hack in, it's not like they get your cell phone numbers or anything like that. They hack in and they're inappropriate. They do inappropriate things, profound things like that. I would find it funny. You guys would find it funny, but it's not appropriate on an educational platform. Um, to do Google class, Google meets or Google classroom or, or whatever it is, uh, teachers have to fill out a form and they have to request a time in a day. I wouldn't have a problem doing that. My problem with that is, um, a lot of you are working and you have hours during the day. I also have just as many of you whose parents are working and you're not. So you're watching the whole house. You're helping your siblings do their work. Just like I'm helping Olivia during the day. Um, it's Friday. It's 420 in the afternoon. I never record this early. Usually I record in the middle of the night because Jimmy's at work and I'm with the kids by myself and I'm teaching first grade. So I can relate to those of you who are on that level. It's almost impossible to have your siblings on a laptop, on a computer, on an iPad, trying to do their schoolwork. You're trying to help them and you're trying to do your work. Um, so for me to require a set time and day for us to meet, so to say, and have a live class would almost be impossible given the circumstances of everybody's various home environments right now. Um, some of you are sick. Some of your classmates, believe it or not, have COVID. Some of your classmates have had parents who have COVID. 
um, some of you, uh, your peers have uh, lost relatives to COVID. Um, so there's so many different issues going on with this madness that for me to have a live classroom, I could do it, but I feel like not everybody would benefit from it. And it would just frustrate those who can't do it. Um, I am trying to look into other things where maybe it could be live and, and those people want to do it, they can sign in, but it's also recorded so you can refer to it later. Um, I don't even know if that would help so because you're just watching another video. Um, so anyway, my whole point is please communicate with me. And I know it took me five minutes to say that and I apologize, but please communicate with me. Um, I hope you all are checking the William Floyd website uh, regularly because they did put out plans for, excuse me, graduation, awards night, scholarship night, and prom. And then they also updated it okay. two days ago. Let me know when you're done, I gotta talk about something. Okay, they updated it two days ago and um, they did set a, let's say, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I wanna say temporary, but a, um, you know, a tentative, tentative, that's what I'm looking for, tentative in-person graduation date and a tentative prom date. Um, I was very excited to see that. I want you guys to know that William Floyd School District is the only school district or the first school district on Long Island to be doing what they're calling a curbside graduation. Um, most school districts are not doing that. Uh, they're literally the first to put it out there publicly. It was all over the radio stations and I think it was on the news that we're the first district. So be proud of where you come from. Be proud, you know, stay Floyd strong because um, your district is doing everything they can given the circumstances. Here comes another one. Yes, Liv. Okay, do you need to wash it off or is it okay? All right, well, ask daddy, he'll get you a band-aid. Literally my husband's with them and they're gonna keep running up to the window and talking to me. Um, yeah, you know, the. They're gonna do everything they can. Um, just understand guys, like as long as the danger is there and the risk is there, the school has to follow the rules and the laws set by the government. So I know you're angry and I know you're emotional and some of you have talked to me about it. Um, try to take deep breaths and we'll all get through this, okay? I do miss you guys. I miss being in the classroom. I miss making fun of all of you um, <laughs> in my own loving way. And um, I just miss our normal. Isn't that sad? Like as tired as I was going to work pregnant, as tired as I was going to work and being pregnant, coaching and momming and I do, and, and as much as I love being with my children right now, because it's amazing to be with them um, all this time. I mean, I've never spent time like this with my kids, even in the summer. Like this is basically summer vacation has expired already, the time equivalency. Um, it's, it, I'm grateful for it. But I do miss my normal, getting up and going to work and getting out and using my brain and just doing that. So I get it. Um, try to hang in there. All right, guys? I think of you all every day. Know that. Mommy Sicaro loves you. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to go over the homework from video lesson 17. I believe it was 32. No, I'm wrong. 28, 30, and 39. Let, um, just cut her hand on something. I know. She came to the window and told me first. Oh. Okay, so we're going to go over the homework from video lesson 17, which was 28, 30, and 39. And then we're going to do a couple extra examples. So hopefully the more we do this, the better it gets. Okay? So this is... Do you hear uh, Ophelia singing Frozen in the background? Notes for video lesson 18. She is so princess obsessed. I miss telling you guys my little Sakaro stories of the day, but Ophelia is princess 24 seven, right Jim? Yeah. She has to be in a princess dress all day or something that resembles princess dress up. And then, God forbid, we don't have a nightgown ready for her at night. That's the new thing. She screams and cries for 30 minutes when we put her in regular PJs. Guys, I had to order princess nightgowns. This kid is so princessed out, it's not even funny. Okay, so. 
Do you hear her? She's so cute. All right, so we have, this was the homework on 28. dy over dx equals one over x squared plus x. So I think I gave you a little hint here at the end of video lesson 17. And I said, hey, let's simplify this first. I'm gonna rewrite it and bring it up and make the exponent negative. Okay, now once I do that, I wanna separate the variables, get my y do i's on one side, get my x dx's on the other. The way I'm gonna do that right now is I'm gonna stick this over one and cross multiply it out. Everybody go Kung Fu fighting. So I get one dy equals x to the negative two plus x dx. Now check yourself before you wreck yourself. I have y dy's on one side and x dx on the other, okay? Now, then in order to get rid of the derivative notation, what's the inverse of a derivative? An antiderivative. And whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other. Now I think this is the thing that you guys keep getting confused with. The antiderivative of one dy. So. Let's pause for a second. The antiderivative of one dy. Okay. You know what? I'm just gonna do it here. Ignore what's written above here. The antiderivative of one dy, okay, is just y. Why? Why <laughs> ask why? The reason why is, I'm gonna like this so you don't get confused at what's written above it. Derivative and antiderivative undo each other. So think of a derivative. What's the derivative of y? Multiply, take one away. The derivative of one y is just one. So the antiderivative of one is y. The derivative of y is one. Okay, let's, let's try another one. What's the derivative of three x? That's right, it's three. So what is the antiderivative of three dx? It has to be three x. You stick an x with it. What's up, babe? So, Daddy, clean it out with the wipes. That's the way it works. Good girl. I'm glad he put a band aid on it. Just remember when you don't have integrals to plug in, you put plus c at the end. Okay, I should have done that up here too. Sorry. Okay, so. Let's try another one. What's the antiderivative of seven dy? You stick a variable with it, seven y plus c. That plus c is because I have no numbers to plug in on the integral. Because what's the derivative of seven y? It's just seven. You gotta go forwards and backwards and it has to make sense, okay? What's the antiderivative of 10 dx. That's right, 10x plus c. The plus c is because there's no numbers to plug in. Because what's the anti, what's the derivative, sorry. Oh, God. What's the derivative of 10x? Just 10. Okay? So the antiderivative of 1 dy is just y. Is everybody okay with this now? You stick, a, you stick a variable with it. The antiderivative of 11 is 11y. The antiderivative of 12 is 12y, okay? Why is it a y? Because I have a dy at the end. Why does this one get an x? Because I have a dx at the end. So if I did the antiderivative of 22r, sorry, dr, then it would be 22r plus c. If I did the antiderivative of 13dt, then it would be 13t plus c. Are we okay with this, darlings? Okay. All right. Can I just tell you my daughters own my husband. They're out there telling him what to do, even the two-year-old, it's very funny. Okay, so we got all this. So the antiderivative of one dy is y, okay? Now, why am I not writing the plus C with this one? Because remember, the plus C only goes to one of the variables. It's either X or Y. And we show mad respect to the letter in the bottom. So if the DX is on the bottom, then it's the X that gets the plus C. Now, add one, put it over that number. So negative two plus one is negative one, and then you put it over that number. 
plus, add one, this is an imaginary one, put it over that number. You show mad respect to the letter in the bottom, so the X is the side that gets the plus C. Now I'm just gonna clean this up So I did this first. Positive divided by a negative is a negative. And then I'm gonna make this a positive exponent by kicking it back down to the bottom and making it positive. Is everybody okay with what I just did there? That's just algebra. Divide by a negative one, it becomes negative. Make this exponent positive by sticking it back to the bottom. Now, this is where I plug in the initial condition. They told me y of two equals one. That's the point two, one. So everywhere I see x, I plug in a two. And everywhere I see y, I plug in a one. And I'm gonna solve for c. So we ready? Four divided by two is two. And this is negative one half. So two minus a half is one and a half, right? or four halves minus one half is three halves. What's the opposite of adding three halves? Subtracting it. And again, you could do the fractions part in your calculator. So C is negative one half, it looks like. What did I do wrong? No, we're good. No, we're not. I did something wrong, let's see. Negative one over x, negative one half plus two plus c. Two minus a half is one and a half. So that's three halves plus c. One minus three halves is two halves minus three halves, right? Is negative a half. So my answer keeps wrong. So now I gotta go back to this part. Now, how do I know what to go back to? Well, you go back to the part where when you finished, it's the last step before you plug in X and Y. The last step before plugging in the initial value, X and Y. This is what I call the general solution, by the way. Let me get my stupid dog and let her in the house because they went for a walk and left the dog in the backyard and my 85 pound pit bull is a big old baby that doesn't like to be by herself. Come on, Rex. Now I know you can all still hear me, but when they come back, she'll be crying to go back out with them because she's a big old baby. Okay, so the general solution is what you get when you end up with the plus C, okay? It's the antiderivative plus C. The general solution has the C in it. Why do we call it general? Because it's the family of answers. This is gonna lead into slope fields next, okay? There's a family of answers here depending on what you plug in for X and Y, okay? Once I give it an initial value, this two, one, it's no longer a general solution because you see we get a C. C, C, we get a C. Once I have my C, I can go back up here and rewrite it. And every C, C, I'm going to put a negative one half. Make sure it's solved for Y at this point. Sometimes you get lucky and it's done. Sometimes you don't. This is called a particular solution. Why? Because I've found the C value. Okay, general solution is a family of answers. There's a whole bunch of answers here depending on what C is. What does C depend on? The point that the differential equation goes through. So once they give me a specific point, I can get a specific answer, a particular answer. Without this point, I get a general answer with a plus C. Okay, all right, let's try another one. So that was 28, let's try 30. I'm trying to go a lot slower. I hope that's helping. I don't know. I hate talking to myself, guys. Let me tell you. X to the negative two thirds. And they told you Y of negative one equals negative five. 
Okay, so again, separate your variables, okay? I want my y dy's on one side, my x dx is on the other. So I'm gonna stick it over one, and everybody go, Kung Fu fighting. Some of you are like, can I just multiply by dx? Sure, you can do that too. So I have one dy equals x to the negative two thirds dx. Now check yourself before you wreck yourself. Do I have my y dy's on one side and my x dx's separate on the other side of the equal sign? Yes. So now how do I undo the derivative notation? You take the antiderivative. What is the antiderivative of just one? We stick a variable with it. In this case, it's a y, because that's dy. What's the antiderivative of x to the negative 2 thirds? I'm gonna add one to it and then put it over that number. So negative two plus three is one third. But if I divide by one third, it's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, which is just three over one. Who gets the plus C? The letter on the bottom. You show mad respect to the X on the bottom. So again, add one, put it over that number. So negative two thirds and three thirds is one third. But if I do this divided by one third, it's the same thing as multiplying by three over one. So now I have this. This is my general solution at this point. There's a family of answers here because of the plus C. This is what makes a slope field. You'll see that next. In order to get a particular solution, I have to plug in my initial value, which in this case is negative one, negative five. So here we go. I'm gonna plug in negative one, negative five now. So here's my negative five for y. The three stays out in front and x to the one third is a cube root, okay? So this is the cube root of negative one and I wanna solve for c. Now some of you are saying, you can't do cube root of negative one. Yes, you can. You can't do square roots of a negative number. You can't do fourth roots of a negative number. Those are imaginary and you get i's. You can do odd roots, a cube root. If you don't believe me, try it in the calculator, okay? Cube root is under math and it's number four. And the cube root of negative one is just negative one because it's negative one cubed. Negative one times negative one is one times negative one is negative one. Ugh, I hate writing in pen. So the cube root of negative one is just negative one. Three times negative one is negative three. How do you move a negative three? Add it. And I get C equals negative two. Now, once I have C, I go back to the last step before I plugged in the X and Y, the general solution. And where I see C, I'm gonna write negative two. If y is by itself and it's a y equals, you're all done. This is my particular solution. I can only get a particular answer from the family of answers when I plug in my x and y. All right, and last but not least, 39. Here comes the ice cream man. By the way, how the hell is the ice cream man essential? How is that allowed? How is that allowed? I want to know. Because these kids across the street in the apartment complex, 20 of them come running out. Nobody's got masks on, nobody nothing. And they're all standing in front of the ice cream truck taking ice cream, which is cold food, so it's not even like it's heated and germs. No, no, no. And they're all touching each other and laughing. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay, anyway. They give you a velocity function. And I also gave you a hint on this when I did video lesson 17. And then they tell you the position at time t, which is zero, is 10. Okay, that's the position, s of t. That means t is zero and position is 10, okay? Time is zero and the position of the function is 10. Now, if you guys remember when we did physics, which you tried to block out like a bad memory, you have position, velocity, and acceleration. 
The derivative of position gives you velocity. The derivative of velocity gives you acceleration. Now you know if you do antiderivatives, you can work backwards. The antiderivative of acceleration would give you velocity, and the antiderivative of velocity would give you position. Oh. With that being said, if I have velocity and they want something for position, I can do that doing an antiderivative. Antiderivative of velocity would give me position. That's why initial value is in position notation. They also told us in the reading of the homework that V is DS over DT. So I rewrote it right away and I even set that up in video lesson 17 for you. And you guys are like, yeah, great. I still didn't know what to do. Well, stick it over one and everybody go Kung Fu fighting. So we have one DS and 9.8T plus five DT. T DT on one side any of the S's and DS's on the other. We're good to go. How do you want to do derivative notation? Take the antiderivative. The antiderivative of a constant, you stick the variable with it. The variable in this case is an S. The antiderivative of 9.8T, add one, put it over that number. The antiderivative of a constant five, Stick a variable with it. In this case, it's a T because of the DT. It tells me what variable to use. Okay. Who gets the C? That's right. The T does. Why? Because you show mad respect to the letter in the bottom, and it's DS over DT. Okay. Now what do I do? Well, what's half of $9.80? Half of $9.80 is $4.90. So I simplified that part. Now, this is my general solution. This is my last step that has the family of answers, the plus C, before I plug in my initial value. So everywhere I see T, I'm gonna plug in zero. And everywhere I see S, I'm gonna plug in 10. So zero squared zero and zero times anything is zero. And zero times anything is zero. So what is C in this case? It's just 10. Now I have my C. I go back to the last step before I plugged in T and S. And I'm gonna rewrite it, but everywhere I see T, here goes my stupid dog, because they're back. I'm gonna plug in what C is. As long as S is by itself, you're all good in the hood. Are we okay, darlings? Let, let her out of the house. Okay, so that took a lot longer than I wanted to, but I think I needed to go that slow for you guys. So that's going over the homework. Why don't we do a couple more? I, I found a couple more here that I dug up. Okay, so let's do a couple more. I'm going to call this still. Mom, the stupid ice cream man's here. <laughs> See my kid because she knows I can't stand it. I know. I was just telling my students, hi, pretty angel. I want to do work. You want to do work with me? Yeah. yeah. You're so cute, but you're all sweaty. I love you. Why don't you go out and play? Okay. Go play in the sandbox, love bug. No. No. Why don't you go blow bubbles? Come on. Come on. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to write these directions here. And these are not on a handout. I totally, totally found them. Find the particular solution of the differential equation. What's the matter, squeaky wheel? You want this? Using... The given initial condition. So I'll give you guys a second to copy that down. What's the matter, baby? I know, but mommy's got to finish teaching. I'm teaching the kids. Say hi, kids. 
<laughs> no, they don't want to do it either. They feel the same exact way you feel. Right, guys? She's going, no. That's how they feel when they see me doing this. Do you want a pen? <sighs> you want purple? You have to take my purple that I'm using. How about how about pink or green? Come on, pink? Let's go outside. Come on. Pick one. Come on. All right, you want green? Yeah. And Daddy will get you some computer paper. We'll, we'll color outside, okay? Come on. Okay, we'll get some paper with Daddy. Why don't you use chalk? You can what do you say to Mommy? You're welcome, baby. All right, so um, so just some fancy, no, fancy directions. Particular solution, that means they want you to actually plug in your X and Y and solve for seeing. You mean an actual answer. Huh. All right, guys? So example one, I apologize, but you probably used this after 18 videos, right? All right, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit here. So please do not throw up in your mouth. Check it out, y'all. What did I just do? A lot of you are like, oh my God, why I'm just starting to get it. Why'd you do that? Because I'm mean. Um, <laughs> you wanna get your Y dy on one side and your X dx on the other. See where I do some algebra? Now before it was nice and easy, we just stuck it over one and kung fu fight it out, right? Now I'm being a little mean. I'm throwing you a little algebra curveball. So you ready? How do you get rid of, because I want to get this X DX over here. I want to get it right there. I want to put it in the box to the right, okay? Opposite of subtracting E to the X is adding it. What do we do to one side? You have to do to the other, right? So how, what's the opposite of dividing by DX? Multiplying by it. So now I have y dy equals e to the x dx. Does everybody see how I separated the variables just now? I got my y dy on one side and my x dx on the other. All right, so the next step, get rid of the derivative notation. What's the inverse of a derivative? An antiderivative, okay? What's the antiderivative of y? Add one, put it over that number. Ah, this is my favorite one. What's the derivative of e to the x? It's just e to the x. That's just a little side note. So the antiderivative of e to the x is just, you got it, ladies and gentlemen, e to the x. Who gets the plus c? The x does. Why? Because you show mad respect to the letter in the bottom, and the dx is on the bottom. So this mofo gets the plus c. Now, at this point, this is my general solution. Now, if they asked for the general solution, I would be very good and I would solve for y. I would get rid of the over two and squared, which means you would multiply by two and square root it. But for right now, I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to plug in my initial condition. The initial condition in this problem is y of zero equals four. Sorry, I didn't write that. I was a little interrupted by my, my terrible two-year-old. No, I'm kidding. She's so cute, but she's so... So terrible twos, it's not even funny. Y of zero equals four. So this is the point zero four. So now I'm gonna plug in zero four. Everywhere I see X, I'm gonna plug in a zero. And everywhere I see Y, I'm gonna plug in a four. I'm sorry, babe. Four squared is 16. 16 cut in half is eight. Anything raised to the zero power is one. What's the opposite of adding one? Subtracting it. Okay? At this point, I know what C is. I go back to my general solution, which in this case was y squared over two equals e to the x. And instead of c now, I'm gonna write plus seven. She's two. What's the opposite of divide? Because now I just wanna get for y equals to get a particular solution. What's the opposite of dividing by two? Multiply everybody by two over one. Because maybe you do one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other. So I get y squared equals, now remember to distribute on this side. Two times e to the x is two e to the x, and two times seven is 14. All right, and what's the opposite of squaring something? I'm gonna square root it. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So this is your particular solution. Why? Because there is no more c. You see? Let's go. Okay. Let's try. I'm just looking here as to the other problems I did. Daddy, 
Should I mean and give you, yeah, let's try it. Let's do a couple of trick ones because we haven't done a trick one yet. Okay. And we're starting to run low on time here. So example two. Let's do dy dx. Oh my God. Do you see what I'm talking about? This is why I miss being at work. He gets frustrated because my two-year-old isn't listening. Like, she's two, really. Okay, so y cos x. We have dy dx equals y cos x. And the initial condition, the initial value, is y of 0 equals 1. So this is the point 0, 1. Now, I need to separate these. Okay, I need my y and my dy on one side and my x dx on the other. So I'm going to stick this 1 over 1 and cross multiply it out. Everybody go Kung Fu fighting. So I get one dy equals y cos x dx. Now, how do I rip the y apart? Because I don't want it over there. That's right. I'm going to divide by it. So now I have one over y dy equals cos x dx. Now, what's the opposite of derivative notation? Because I want to get rid of the derivative notation. The antiderivative. Now I discussed this in video lesson 17. The derivative of ln x is one over x. So what's the antiderivative of one over y? Ln y. Oh, I see a cos function. Let's get tricky with it. The derivative of sine is cosine, right? So what's the antiderivative of cosine? It's just going to be sine. Who gets the plus C? That's right. The X does. Why? Because you show mad respect to the letter in the bottom. Now, at this point, this is my general solution. Because it has the plus C. If they only wanted the general solution, I would solve for Y. But they don't. They want the particular solution. So I'm not going to kill myself just yet. I'm going to stop here and I'm going to plug in 0 for x and 1 for y. Now, sine of 0. That's the point 1 comma 0. Sine is my x value or my y value? That's right. Sine is your y value. So sine of 0 is just 0. ln of 1, okay? I told you guys this in the last lesson. To do it by hand, the imaginary base is E. Set it equal to X, and you do the circle of ln. So it's E to the X equals 1. What do I have to, what do I raise? Anything raised to that power gives me 1. 5 to the X equals 1. 10 to the X equals 1. E to the X equals 1. That's right, it's 0. Anything raised to the 0 power gives you 1. So ln of 1 is 0. If you don't believe me, put it in the calculator. Ln of 1, there it is, 0. Okay? Now that means C is 0. Once I know C, I go back to the general solution and I rewrite what I had, but instead of C, I'm going to write 0. So now I have this. Now this is the first time. How do I solve for y, though? Because I want the particular solution. How do I get rid of ln? What's the inverse of lning something? Doing e to the. So I raise both sides the e to the. e and ln cancels, and I'm left with just y, and the answer is e to the sine x. All right, guys. I had two more examples, but we're at 40 minutes, so I'm going to pull the plug because I feel like I'm killing you and I'll save the other two for next time. Sound good? So what's your homework? Okay, I'm gonna give you this worksheet for video lesson 18, and I would like you to work on numbers four, five, and seven. So four, five, and seven, okay? Three problems, give them a try. Communicate with me, let me know if it's better or worse, and then I'll try and wrap this up and start slope fields next time if you feel better about this stuff, okay? But I will go over the homework first, not a problem. 
All right, my darlings. Love you, miss you, talk to you soon. Adios. Take care. Brush your hair.